We got Florida State going to Clemson, South Carolina. It is a noon kick on ABC in Death Valley. This game lost a little bit of shine because Clemson dropped that one on Monday night to Duke. So not a battle of the unbeatens. Instead, this is Florida State's chance to really make a statement that they are at the top of the ACC. But yours truly will actually be in Clemson, South Carolina for this game. So the program taking the show on the road, going to be in Clemson, South Carolina, going to be in Death Valley for this game. I cannot wait to meet a lot of y'all that watched the show there, both from the Florida State side of things and the Clemson side of things. Haven't tweeted this out. Hadn't let anybody know on social media. If you're watching the show live right now, you are the first to know. We will be at this game, and I am so fired up for it. Going to be a phenomenal one. Like I was talking about a second ago, for Florida State now, this is the year for them. Make no mistake about it. This is what they have built to under Mike Norvell. This is why you go to the portal and get a Keon Coleman and get a Jaheim Bell. This is why a lot of these individuals like Jared Verse and Jordan Travis came back for another season on top of improving their draft stock. For a game like this, you want to beat the best? You want to get the crown? You got to go beat the king. You got to go dethrone the leader in the ACC, and that's Clemson. So this is their chance now to go to Death Valley and do it. This is their chance. Now for Clemson, they want to prove they're still the big dog. And you want to prove that you're still the big dog? Well, this, this, is, your, this is your shot. This is your chance against the trending up right now Florida State Seminoles. A lot of talk around Dabo Sweeney and his way of doing things. And look, I'll be honest, we've taken our, our fair share in that kind of conversation around them going to the portal and how they do things. But this is sort of a clash of philosophies in my mind between Mike Norvell and Dabo Sweeney. Mike Norvell utilized the portal and more power to him because he had to fix his roster. Dabo Sweeney has said, thanks, but no thanks. We're going to do things our way. We'll keep this thing rolling. If Clemson were to win this football game, I think it would be just a tremendous feather in the cap for Dabo Sweeney and a tremendous talking point for him going forward that, well, we, we need to go to the portal. We need to do this. We need to do that. Well, Florida State went to the portal heavily, and we just beat them. That would be the thing that Dabo Sweeney could say should they end up victorious in Death Valley when the dust settles on Saturday afternoon. Florida State is a two-and-a-half-point favorite in this game. So what are the matchups that we got to watch for this one? Well, the first one I think we're all watching, the enormous matchup between the Florida State pass catchers and the Clemson secondary. Because for, for Florida State now, this could be the game breaker. Like it kind of reminds me a little bit from a style standpoint of what Florida State has to offer versus that game against LSU. And like this could just be it for, for, for Florida State. This could be the situation where you walk in there Keon Coleman gets his, Johnny Wilson gets his, and they get it in spades, and it's just, hey, game blouses. Like, that's great that you have X, Y, and Z players. If you're Clemson, that's great. You have a great front seven. But the bottom line is it didn't matter because we routinely won this matchup. The pass catchers for us were the difference. I haven't even talked about Jaheim Bell, the Swiss Army knife that they've utilized at Florida State so far, the transfer from South Carolina. Is that just the game breaker for them? Is that the end-all, be-all, the ace up the sleeve? We'll see. The reason why this matchup is, I think, a little bit more intriguing in this spot, Clemson actually has some pretty good length in the secondary. Nate Wiggins is all of like 6'2". I don't think they have anybody in that secondary starting for them that's under six foot. So we talk a lot about the length of Florida State and how tall Johnny Wilson is and Keon Coleman and his wingspan. But like Clemson now is going to have, on paper at least, the physical potential to match up better than anybody else that Florida State has seen to this point. Now, a subplot within this is Jordan Travis and his health. Is he playing at like 80%? Is he playing at 90%? Is he playing at 70%? I think that will impact this game tremendously. You hope for Florida State's sake that he's able to be closer to that 90% number because there's going to be a couple of instances in this game where the, the play will break down as it does in every college football game. And Jordan Travis is going to have to scramble. And the way, that he, uh, the, the way that he's able to be a threat running the football in this game, if those linebackers at Clemson, they got some good ones now, we'll talk about them, Barrett Carter and Jeremiah Trotter, if they feel threatened by Jordan Travis having to tuck it and run, well, then they play up, occupy some space behind them, and that's an intermediate throw to Keon Coleman, to Jaheim Bell, to whoever you want to insert into that space right there. And that's a big first down for Florida State. 
So scenarios like that are something we have to watch in this football game, and a lot of it will be predicated on how much of a threat Jordan Travis is, which of course goes back to how healthy is he in this football game. Now, the matchup for Clemson, in my mind, and we talked to Ira Schofel of Warchant.com yesterday on the On3 Roundtable YouTube channel. The matchup is Clemson's running back room, Will Shipley, friend of the program, Phil Maffa, first team all downhill against this Florida State defensive line. Because the way that Garrett Riley wants to run this Clemson offense, and we haven't seen it too, too much just yet, they want to operate within a rhythm. They want to kind of snowball. And when I say snowball, you and I both understand this. A lot of y'all that have lived in the Northeast or maybe just anywhere where you get snow, for our West Coast listeners, just take our word on this. Anytime you make a snowball, there's that, that annoying part of the game where you have to kind of start with a, a small little couple of snowflakes packed together and you get it rolling. And that, that first couple of steps where you have to roll that snowball and get snow to pack onto it, like that's the annoying part, that's the tedious part, that's the Clemson run game in this whole thing. That is the Clemson run game for the snowball effect of this offense. So for them, can they get four yards of carry early? Can Will Shipley take a couple defenders with him and pick up five yards on first down, set up second and five? Because eventually, one, you start to wear on a defense if you're Clemson, and that four-yard gain turns into six, turns into seven later and later into the game. And then also what it does, as that snowball gets bigger, it carries momentum. It starts to roll on its own. That Clemson run game, as it wears down and picks up more yardage, that Florida State defense now, they get off balance. That snowball's rolling, and Clemson's going quickly. They get to play with tempo now if they start picking up some solid yards per carry numbers. And then the entire game starts to open up because those safeties have to creep down. Those linebackers trigger more quickly. More guys get open. We talk about it a lot on this show. We have our reservations about the Clemson skill players. But if you're going to give me more real estate to work with, and Antonio Williams gets a head start on your safety, well, then we have more real estate to throw to. Then the offense really starts snowballing, and we get to have those manufactured explosives we've talked about with Garrett Riley's offense. We haven't seen it just yet. The last time a lot of y'all watched Duke, a lot of time uh, uh, nationally we got to see Duke in, against a solid opponent was Monday night against, or I said Duke, against Clemson in that Duke game. That was the last time a lot of us saw them nationally. That wasn't the offense we'd come to expect from Garrett Riley from his TCU days. Did they find a rhythm? Did they get to take those small bites that turn into big bites later in the game? Because they will have to create some offensive output in this game. I wholeheartedly believe that. Jordan Travis and company will force them to score points. Now, going back to the other side of that matchup, for Florida State on the defensive line, if they can get some early stonewallage and create a, let's say, third and seven, third and eight, you get a good stop for a gain of two or three on first down, force an incompletion on second down, well, then those boys get to rush the passer. I'll tell you what, Clemson right now, from a skill position standpoint, is too one-dimensional for me to feel good about them separating anything short of like two Mississippis, Jared Verse will eat and he will eat greedy. The rest of this defensive line, some real athleticism coming off the edge. They will eat greedy. All right, there's a lot of depth, a lot of ability. They will get after Cade Klubnik. This offensive line for Clemson, now we've got our reservations a little bit, so they have to be able to get some snowball effect early. Got to pack that snow early in the run game and be able to manufacture explosives. Otherwise, could be a very, very long day at the office for Cade Klubnik and company. If they're off schedule and out of rhythm, bad things are going to happen. A lot of that starts with the Florida State defensive line. Now, here's going to be, I think, maybe the, uh, the moment of truth in this football game. We've talked about Florida State a lot and how this is what they've built to this year, and they have aspirations to win the ACC and to dethrone Clemson. There's going to be a point in this football game where they will have to prove that they are the more physical football team. I'm not talking about a box score. I'm not talking about yards per carry. I'm not talking about overall, you know, sacks acquired. I'm talking about when it's fourth and one and Clemson is trying to extend the drive to stay alive. Can you bow up and have a statement kind of play that no, 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 no. This is our thing now. We're in Death Valley. We are the more physical football team, both literally and from an approach standpoint, and get that stop in fourth and one. Or on the flip side, if you're Clemson, you're going to have to prove that, no, 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 we are still the big cat. We are still that big dog in this conference. 
we, we are going to find a way to pick this up on fourth and one. We did not see that against Duke now for Clemson. Do they find a way to muster a little bit of extra pride, being in Death Valley? The game probably, if you had beaten Duke, is maybe a night game at this point. But it's not, so there's a little bit less shine on you right now. Can you demand that shine back with having the more physical approach in this football game? And again, I'm talking about a moment-to-moment kind of thing. Fourth quarter, game's on the line, because I think it will be close. I think that two-and-a-half-point spread is right about accurate if you're watching this one. Can you be the more physical football team when it matters the most in that moment of truth? I think that will kind of define where things stand in this football game. So at the end of the day, though, I think Florida State answers the call. From a Clemson side of things, man, I still need to see it. I still have that need to see it kind of feel from them. I think Cade Klubnick is extremely talented. You know how I feel about Will Shipley on this show. This defensive front for Clemson, if they're able to kind of take away some of those pass catchers from Florida State and force it back to the front seven kind of game, then they have a shot. Then Peter Woods gets to play. Then Barrett Carter gets to play. Then Jeremiah Trotter gets to play but I worry about them matching up with the explosiveness of Florida State. And I worry about Clemson being able to answer scores. I think that Boston College game for Florida State, that letdown, as much as it probably sucked to watch the next day in Sunday film, I think it was exactly what the doctor ordered heading into this game. Florida State will have all their attention on Clemson. There will be no letdown kind of look here from Florida State. So for that reason, I think it's a battle. I think Clemson shows why they have been the team they have under Dabo Sweeney over the past couple of years. But I think Florida State answers the call, like I was saying, and winning this football game in Death Valley. Final score, Florida State 31, Clemson 25. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.